Welcome back to Tight Poker Videos. This is Sean for TightPoker.com. I uh, brought up our website, as you can see. You always see very good information about poker strategy, as well as some featured news here at our site. So a quick plug. We definitely encourage you to visit it if you enjoyed these videos. Uh, I got a couple of requests for uh, more in-depth Hold'em Manager tutorials. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing we're going to preface here is that this is really for basic users. And uh, maybe we'll go into a more advanced uh, hold and manager tutorial later, but uh, I just want to focus maybe 20 minutes on some of the basics and what you should be doing. So the first thing you should be doing is you should be updating your hold and manager regularly. Hold and manager comes out with uh, patches, and this will account for some of the updates that most of the major poker sites will bring out. So if you have an old version, you might be encountering a bug that you may not even be aware of, and you might think, well, this is some sort of problem with the program, but it's already been fixed. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the Hold'em Manager forum. And it's hold'emmanager.net slash forum. And what you're going to want to do is go down to releases. And you'll see the latest one is 1.0941. So we'll go to releases. And we'll click on this link right here. And it says we're launching the 1.09 beta here. And this is, you can tell it's the beta version because it has the hem beta update.exe. So just click on that, and we're going to want to save this file. Shouldn't take too long to, uh, to update. We're just going to go ahead and double click on that and hit, uh, it says open executable file, hit OK. And we're going to run. And you'll get this message this program will update. Do you want to continue? Of course. And then the cool thing is, is that they actually tell you, okay, well, what's been in all the updates. So if you see you've got like, you know, 30, you know, 1.09 beta 30, well, then you can look up and see all these different fixes that have occurred. And sometimes it's brand new features that have been entered into the program for free. So just hit next a bunch of times. Make sure that this is indeed the folder that you have Holden Manager installed into. And once you're done, you'll see this operation successful message and you can hit close. Thank you. And now you've updated hold and manager. So uh, that's a really key thing. You should be doing that at least every two weeks. Uh, I do it like at least once a week because uh, there usually is a, a beta update once a week, uh, sometimes two times. So uh, let's get into hold and manager. So here we are in hold and manager. And you can see that uh, I actually have the Hold'em and Omaha Manager Professional installed. And then you'll see your version, 1.09 Beta 41. So that's where you're going to be able to tell what version you have. So you'll need to know if you need to upgrade or not. Uh, if you need to update your auto folders, so this is, uh, let's say you add a poker room, you decide you want to play on Bodog or whatever, just uh, something kind of random uh, outside of the two major ones that everyone plays on. You'll just click here and then add that subfolder and then you'll be ready to auto import. So when you want to import hands, you just click on this start auto import and then it'll um, bring up the HUD and uh, capture your hand histories. Um, if you have a bunch of hand histories you have transferred over, let's say you played on your laptop and you saved the text files, you can just do one at a time by clicking import file or if you have a bunch of them in a folder, just import from folder. <clears throat> So let's talk about uh, the HUD. I know a lot of people are um, very intimidated by that. And you're going to need to know what a HUD can do for you. And you start out super simple at first. And then as you move up in stakes, you're, <laughs> you're, I'm, I'm just kind of laughing because my HUD has changed monthly, to be honest with you. And it's just something that will evolve. And as you change games and change stakes, and I definitely use different HUDs between, say, six max games and full ring games. and um, you'll definitely need uh, different HUD layouts for 25 no limit than you will playing 200 no limit. They're just different games. They're played differently and there's different dynamics that go on. If you're playing 200 no limit six max, you're going to need to know three bet and four bet stats, uh, you know, without having to click because you're going to need them so many times. Um, whereas if you're playing 25 no limit full ring, you almost never need that because it's only going to be one or two for everybody because they're only going to do that with aces or kings. So, um, just something to keep in mind. So let's go into the HUD options and the player preferences at first. So this can be a very intimidating screen and uh, 
this is the default one. Uh, I believe I've obviously um, edited it, but uh, let's just go ahead and create a new one. So we'll go ahead and new config, and we'll just do uh, put in a name for it and hit OK. And so uh, what we'll do then is basically uh, oh, change the numbers to letters there. So it'll keep your default stuff here, but we can uh, remove, we'll just remove most of this out. In fact, I'll do everything. So now you know how to remove stuff, haha. -ha. Um, so some of the basic stats you'll wanna have is VPIP. And this is voluntary put money into the pot. If you're confused about some of these terms, uh, there's a good site called pokerterms.com that you can go to and look a lot of this stuff up. Uh, so if you don't know what VPIP means, um, you know, go ahead and do a Google search, but I do recommend going to poker terms and uh, I'm sure we talk about it at um, Type Poker as well. So if you want something to add, you click add. So it's like, great, you've got VPIP. Now, uh, what is, uh, how is that going to be displayed, blah, blah, blah. Well, what is this? Color ranges. Um, let's say, if you understand VPIP, it basically means how often is someone in a pot. And if it's you know, 1% of the time, well, we know they're super tight. They're only playing aces. If it's 85% of the time, we know they're super loose. They're basically playing any two cards. So what we can do is actually add a range so that we can have a tight player be blue and a loose player be red. So we put in this number, and this is completely up to you, uh, but I'm going to put in 15, and we're going to make this our blue for a tight player, and then we hit add. So now if someone's at 15 or below, that number's gonna show up in blue. And then I'm gonna do uh, 35, and this is gonna be our solid tag, so he'll be green. So we'll pick green, hit add. And then someone under 99 will be a maniac, and we'll make him red. And we'll hit add. Now, I, I just pulled these numbers out of the air. These aren't, you know, you shouldn't be necessarily for you. You should, you should determine for what game and what you're playing at and go on forums and find out what other people are doing. And you can even ask for people's HUDs because you can import them here. So let's do a couple more. Uh, Pre-flop raise, we'll need to add that. And then uh, you might want to do uh, aggression factor, although a lot of people debate how important that is. Personally, I have flop turn river aggression factor. I do it by street. It's uh, a lot more uh, accurate in my opinion. So we'll have that. Uh, we can do a new line and then we'll do a uh, three bet and uh, fold to three bet. And then how about steal? Let's do steal, steal. And how about fold to steal? So there we go. That's a really good basic HUD, actually. Uh, this will give you a good idea um, in a general sense of who a player is. And then you can go in, and like we did for the color ranges, you can do color ranges for this and this and all the rest of them. You can also change the abbreviation, and uh, you can change the font. And uh, for me, I actually recommend going to Verdana, regular, and then actually changing this all the way to 7. Uh, it's not even on here. Eight's on here, but if you do it to seven, uh, in my opinion, it actually shows up a lot better. Um, and you have to do that for each individual one. But uh, you know, especially when you're playing full ring, you'll need to really maximize the space that your HUD has. So if you've got a good monitor, I mean, if you're on a little 15-inch monitor, um, you know, it just kind of depends with your resolution size more than anything, to be honest with you. So just play around with it and have fun and just do one table at a time. And then you could actually do this as you play and just hit apply and then it'll update. So uh, if you wanted to import someone's HUD, uh, you know, you just click on import and uh, we actually have to close this, but um, yeah, you'll just click on one, hit open and it'll actually then become one of these and you can actually just use someone else's and then adapt it to whatever you want to play. Uh, you can change the appearance, and this will actually change the default font. Uh, and you can change all sorts of things, the opacity, the muck cards, uh, and all sorts of things here that uh, you can get into. It's honestly not too important. Keep it the way it is, and you'll be fine. Uh, 